So God is in the same position. Now God created mankind. and he, He's our creator. You could say he's got a, a, a fatherly concern for, for his creation. On the one hand, you know, he cares about us. But when we disobeyed God, he, we put him in this catch-22. Now, he, on the one hand, wants to forgive us, wants to find a way to redeem us, to, to pardon us, to withhold the punishment that we deserve, which is hell forever. But on, on the other hand, he's, he's the Lord of hosts. He's the, he's the king of the universe. And he's got hosts in heaven. All these moral beings. I mean, two-thirds of the angels who are still willingly serving him. Who, who still obey his law. Well, if God just forgave mankind, what would happen to his whole kingdom? It would be chaotic. It would be confusion. It would weaken his reign. It would weaken his, his rule. So, so how is he going to find a, an escape from this catch-22? How can he uphold the authority of his law throughout his kingdom without having his law fall into contempt while at the same time forgiving the very ones who, who challenged the authority of his law who broke his law and disobeyed his law how can God have both and that's why Christ God became a man he provided a, a substitute a replacement a alternative to the punishment we deserve just as King Zeleucus sacrificed his own eye in order to, to give partial forgiveness to his son, Christ sacrificed his whole body and shed all of his blood in, so that we don't have to receive the punishment that we deserve. Now, the atonement was not any sort of gratification to God the Father. It was not like the Father was harsh and bitter, uh, vindictive, seeking some sort of bloody appetite satisfaction, but that the Father wanted to find a way to forgive man while still maintaining the authority of His law. Now the atonement of Christ did not satisfy the letter of the law. The letter of the law required the soul that sins, it shall die. The letter of the law required the, the death of the guilty, the death of the sinner, and not the death of anyone else. And so according to what, what's considered retributive justice. Uh, retributive justice is treating every moral character according to what they deserve. Treating every uh, or moral being according to their, their true character. So retributive justice in the atonement of Christ was not satisfied. Christ was innocent, yet He was the one that died. The sinners were guilty, yet they are the one that lived. So when it comes to what's considered retributive justice, that was not satisfied in the atonement. But the spirit of the law, the, let, uh, the, the spirit of the law can be considered public justice. That God is trying to promote the well-being of His creation. And, he, he pro and in order to promote the well-being of His creation, He's outlawed sin. Just as King Zeleucus outlawed adultery to pr promote the well-being of His kingdom, God has outlawed all sin and all selfishness in order to promote the well-being of His universe. Now this law is good. This law must be maintained. This law, and when, when Christ died on behalf of sinners, being wounded for our transgressions and, and bruised for our iniquities, now this has declared to all the universe, to all the hosts of heaven, that God regards His law, that God is determined to maintain the authority of His law, and that you cannot expect to disobey His law and just simply get away with it. So, the atonement has solved the dilemma that God was in. Now, God can forgive the very ones who broke His law. When, when a sinner repents and believes, God can turn away from His wrath. So, the um, nature of the atonement, now we, we discuss the necessity of the atonement. Why was the atonement necessary? I mean, why can't God just forgive sin? And that's what the Socinians taught, that God, because He's merciful and loving, he can just forgive. Well, God couldn't because He wasn't just an individual. He was a ruler and a king. You know, if a man sins against me, I can just forgive him. He, I don't need an atonement in order to forgive someone. They don't need to make a satisfaction or an atonement or give an offering. I can just forgive them. But I'm just an individual. Now, uh, a ruler and a king does not have that luxury or that liberty because it's not only himself that's being sinned against, it's the community at large that's being sinned against. So 
So there was an absolute necessity of the atonement.